What I wanted to say in my script really was kind of what is stigma? And it's very important to uh, think of this question and, and who is the best person to answer the question what is stigma? The best person is somebody with mental illness. And we did a research study in Montreal the last two or three years where we went to 60 people with mental illness from a variety of uh, men, women, variety of ethnicities, variety of ages. Uh, and we asked people in a very general way, the, the project was actually about recovery. We asked them, what is recovery to you? What is the biggest barriers to recovery? What are the biggest facilitators to recovery? And the biggest barrier in every group, whether young, old, middle-aged, black, white, Asian, um, men and women was stigma. This came out, permeated every single interview. What is stigma? Really, it's it, in my life. It's the, the the thing that comes up and says you can't do what you want to do. Uh, stigma to me means uh, labeling somebody and uh, judging them based on the label. So, using all different kinds of labels to uh, to kind of make judgments about that person before you actually know anything about them. Stigma is um, I can't define it but um, I can give an example where in the media uh, people with mental illness are portrayed as being violent type people. Um, the people I know with mental illness aren't that way really at all. Stigma is when you say that you're going to exclude someone or you're going to say something bad about someone or you're going to do something bad to someone simply because they're different from you. and. Um, that normally comes around because there's a lack of understanding or a fear to understand. There are a lot of public misperceptions about mental illness and about people with mental illness. For example, uh, many people think people with mental illness are prone to crime or violence. And I've, it's part of my job here at McGill to ensure uh, that we educate the public uh, better about the realities of mental illness. Um, so I see myself as a public educator. Um, I also think it's important that people with mental illness themselves are part of this conversation and take a role as community educators. Uh, and therefore I've helped set up programs where we kind of train people with mental illness to get out into the community and to talk about their mental illness, talk about themselves and their recovery so that the public is better educated about what it means to have a mental illness. Okay, my name is Simon Pose, and uh, I'll just talk a bit of my background. I have a high school education. Uh, I grew up in a middle class uh, family, and I'm dealing with uh, major depressive disorder, and I'm taking two different types of medication for it. I'm doing well, and thanks to a remarkable team of professionals, I got involved with uh, Dr. Whitley's participatory uh, film project, uh, which we now call RADAR, which stands for uh, Research Advocacy uh, Documentary Action Research. I got it right. Uh, Basically, we're a collective who are devoted to the uh, raising awareness about mental illness issues, organizing screenings, to catalyzing change on the ground and we're trying to use our presence to uh, empower people with mental illness and to try and improve public attitudes and educate the public. Participatory video is a form of action whereby people who have suffered some level of marginalization or stigmatization or some vulnerable group uh, gets together and gets hold of video cameras and often with the assistance of a facilitator or a trainer will learn how to use those video cameras, learn how to edit, learn how to script, learn how to produce, and will then 
make short documentaries, short videos about their lives, about the realities of their life, uh, which can then be shown to target groups, to the community, uh, to people at large, to educate the community and the target groups about the issues that are faced by this marginalised or vulnerable group. The project started in 2014. We had one site here in Montreal where I'm based. Uh, we had another one in Toronto and another one in Halifax. Uh, we recruited people with mental illness from these sites. We also employed facilitators, so videographers, professional videographers, uh, to train these groups. Uh, the videographers set up training course, they taught them camera work, taught them how to do interviews, taught them scripting, and then they'd go out into the real world and do shooting, and by the end made over 25 films. In my opinion, a very impressive group of films. No we have to do it again. I heard about the Radar Project through Forward House. I was kind of skeptical. I didn't, I didn't know if I really wanted to do that. A friend of mine said, try it out. What do you got to lose? And then I did, and uh, I actually liked it. At one point, they made a few films, which I wasn't really around. And then uh, we pitched a bunch of films, and one of them was mine, and it got chosen. So we made that film. The film I, I pitched was called Somewhere Out There. It's a mythological based uh, story. What it's about is um, isolation and birth and renewal. Going into this project, I didn't expect to make a film. I had no idea, I had no intention of doing that. I could be going there dragging my ass and I could come home jumping out of my skin, out of joy and feeling really good about what I've done. Um, unfortunately, for, for something like depression, you have to kind of do that every day. Uh, but I, I find the artist, art, like being artistic, that's one way of really um, pulling yourself out of yourself. I told the, the story of my mental illness diagnoses and my, my psychiatric history just to give people an idea of where I was coming from. It was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to have to do a lot of the work on my own. I mean, if you look at the credit roll at the end, everybody took a scene or a shot or did something smaller in the film and it was really great to have their participation and they're all very good filmmakers and uh, I, was, I was really proud of them. They all, they all really pulled together and did their best for me. Uh, as a facilitator uh, on the Radar Project, I work in Montreal. I'm based in a neighborhood called NDG. The approach that we're taking um, is called participatory video. So that means that as a facilitator, I'm not supposed to kind of interfere too much. I'm there to kind of just help if the, the filmmakers request my help. Otherwise, I'm just kind of standing around and just watching them and, and kind of absorbing their, the way they're working together. So it really leaves the power in their hands to make the films they want, about what they want, and, and, and with kind of the tone and the approach that they want. Although I had been making films at that point for over 10 years, I had never um, worked in the mental health sector, so there is very little that I knew about what a mental illness is. So I guess one of the things I kind of struggled with a bit was just my perception of a person with a mental illness. I was like confronted with the fact that I was very wrong, you know? I had no idea um, that, you know, someone who, for instance, might have schizophrenia can you know have their own apartment, pay their rent on time, you know go shopping, make meals for themselves, uh, have boyfriends, girlfriends, wives, husbands. Um, I gotta say it wasn't totally different to be honest than working with people who don't have a diagnosis as well. My name is Fenton Benjamin, and I'm taking part in the participatory video. 
at Ford House. It, it really brings purpose to, to your life, um, to be taking part in a project that allows you the opportunity to have a brighter future, um, as well as to experience things about yourself, learn more about yourself, learn more about your illness. And that's one of the reasons why I think the participatory video classes are very important. UT 90.3 FM is currently 7.02.46 AM. My name is Fenton Benjamin and alongside me is Sheila Ferrando. And what do we have today, Sheila? Oh, we have a wonderful show lined up for you today. We are going to hear, as promised, some uh, streeters from the Students in Mind conference that happened on the weekend for mental health at McGill. Also at 7.30, we've got um, Jennifer's Story, a documentary film by Richard Dorado and Jennifer M. A very interesting piece on homelessness and recovery. The Radar participatory video team worked hard this last season on several good new shorts. Here, live on the telephone today, we have director-producer Richard Dorado and writer Jennifer M. Richard, what, what has the response been to Jennifer's story? Uh, so far, it's been amazing. It's been really positive, really encouraging, um, both online and, uh, and those that I've talked to in person. Um, hearing things like brilliant, beautiful, it's empowering and educational and so on. So it's been really overwhelming. Jennifer, where have you been screening the film? Uh, so far, it's been screened at guest lectures at Ford House, um, and it's going to be screened at cafes, hospitals, schools, and also in some film festivals. I, I wish you luck with that. Thank you for interviewing today about Jennifer's story. Thank you so much. So I found uh, it was really difficult to actually, the first time I started talking about my, my mental health and um, things like uh, homelessness and in front of a camera because um, it's not something that I've shared with a lot of people. So um, it, was, it was difficult to talk about it um, and it was definitely hard to watch uh, afterwards when there's people, uh, large audiences watching, especially in, in the classrooms and things that uh, it, was, it was, I'm really proud that and happy that I did, did talk about it. Um, but it, because it was my first time speaking about it, I found it was, it was a difficult thing to kind of um, discuss uh, this, my story and uh, in a very detailed way. So. I'm really happy that I made that film because it's, it's like telling the truth about, um, about myself and my story and the truth can be very powerful uh, in itself in terms of changing people's minds and um, making them think uh, about about mental health and about stigma and those kind of things. So, to me, my future is looking bright. Um, I have a lot of good things on the horizon. I'm hoping to get married in the fall to my boyfriend Grant, and uh, yeah, just uh, a lot of a lot of good activities coming up soon. So, the future's looking good. My future, uh, it's looking good right now. It's, uh, I mean, I'm. I never dreamed I would be back into film. I never b dreamed that I'd be encouraged to continue doing something that I enjoy. So, um, so it's great. Will I do it in the future? Yes, I will do filmmaking in the future. But I think you should look to, to, to Fenton for a lot of that too because he's, he's just the, the film buff. He likes to take pictures everywhere. You know, I, I just I just want to be able to have a good time and be able to leave something behind that other people can 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 feed themselves with. They say when God closes a door, he opens a window, and and our house has all the windows open right now. It's it's a uh, it's a really good feeling. You're filming. You only doing three sentences. No, no, I am. Behind the scene, for yeah. Richard and Winchers and uh, Tia's monologue. And this is Sheila, who's going Hi. to be taking care of it. That's me. I'm going to do behind the scenes with Richard. Oh, let's see if I can do my hair. <laughs> By the way, Sheila? Yes, I'm not sure that the lighting here is very good either. And I don't know if you... No, I'll do it from the other side. See, it's a natural leader. 
and he sees the positive where some people see negativity. Yes. Uh... Well, that was behind the scene for today, August the 17th. That's it. That's it. We did it. We did it. Yeah. That's it for now. Over and out. <laughs>